Hi and welcome to Team Banana. I'm Banana J and what do we have on the anti-static map today? Well, apart from Bananasaurus that we've got there, um, which came from the uh, Natural History Museum trip, uh, we've got the Asus uh, PG221 gaming monitor. It's a few years old now. Um, it originally went to uh, go with my uh, sort of monster PC that I created um, about 10 years ago. So this monitor was bought a little bit later, maybe it's about seven, five, seven years old, something like that. Um, it's good value for money anyway. Um, got it for about two, 300 quid from uh, our friend Graham at custompcs.co.uk. And um, yeah, it's been a really good monitor. Um, if we jump off, uh, we can have a look at what exactly it's doing and then we'll come back and we'll start doing stuff with it. So as you can see this is what's happening to the monitor at the moment. If we zoom in you can see there's lots of distortion and these sort of three inch long lines that are about a pixel or two wide. It's uh, genuinely quite irritating all over the screen. So as you've seen, um, basically what's happening is we've got a lot of sort of pixely lines all over the screen. And to be honest, this has been getting a lot worse. Um, other things that are happening with it are the um, on-screen menu um, that is actually integrated within the monitor um, is all sort of glitched and pixelated. So this is the first sort of indicator that it is in fact the monitor that's faulty uh, because you get these similar symptoms of these sort of um, pixely lines and uh, sort of static interference and stuff from a faulty graphics card. Now strike two for sort of problem solving uh, whether this was the monitor or not was we connected it up to other devices uh, we hooked it up to another PC, we hooked it up to games consoles, DVD player, things like that. And every single time, exactly the same result. So it's definitely, definitely this monitor. Um, already I've got an inkling um, that it's probably going to be some kind of capacitors. And um, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to take it apart. Um, I've already taken the back off because it is a little bit... Uh, <laughs> a little bit big to do on camera with the setup that we've got at the moment. Um, but what I'm going to do, like I said, take this off, take the heat shield off, and yeah, we're going to have a look at what's inside it and what we're going to tackle first. Okay. Okay, so you can see we have now taken the back off, and what we have is a couple of circuit boards connected to the back of a pretty large flat screen panel. So what do we think it could be? Now I've had a look at this and upon closer inspection I actually think that it's this area here. Now what this area is is the uh, power supply board. You can tell because it's got the uh, kettle socket there but yeah basically what I'm gonna do is we're going to replace all these capacitors because to be honest this monitor is renowned for running a little bit hot anyway um, I've done some readings with the multimeter and what we're actually getting is we're getting some odd power readings from this board so what this is doing is it's actually supplying um, it, it supplies 5 volts and it supplies 12 to 14 volts and to this board here which is the controller board you've got like the main processor and you've got all the gubbins and stuff which allow you to uh, display HD signal DVI etc and yeah basically what's happening is this board is throwing out uh, fluctuations between 11 and 16 volts on the 12 volt rail so yeah anyways we're gonna go off I'm gonna take this thing out. Now I will say to anyone who is thinking about doing this themselves, um, please, please, please be aware that you are now working with high voltage electronics. You know, this isn't a handheld device anymore or, uh, you know, 
anything uh, that's just um, static sensitive. I mean, this is genuinely quite dangerous. Um, what you've got here are capacitors that are still holding a charge at several hundred volts. You will genuinely get a hell of a shock <laughs> off of these capacitors. So what I'll be doing as part of this is obviously um, I'll be using a anti-static uh, platform to be using it, um, repairing it and stuff. And also I'll be um, I'll be draining the capacitors uh, one by one. Um, using my uh, fancy little gadget and uh, then then I'll get to replacing them and soldering them but yeah they're, they're not hugely mainstream capacitors that's on here already so we're gonna go ahead put some Panasonic ones on jobs are good and so see you on the other side so the boards out and here is a closer look at the board in question so these are the uh, these two black things here are the inverters and then we've got all these uh, things that look like little batteries just up here um, they're the electrolytic capacitors that we'll be replacing so every single one you see like these little ones we're gonna do them they, the smaller ones probably won't need replacing but we're gonna do them anyway so we've covered all bases and definitely this larger one and some of these other ones, um, particularly the ones which are lurking here underneath the uh, the heat sink of these uh, of these MOSFETs. So I'll go on and do that. And uh, there's not much on the other side. A couple of uh, chips and stuff. But yep, yeah, I'm going to go off get that done. Right. So this is what we've got. Um, we've gone ahead, if you remember what the board looked like before we uh, jumped off, which in video time is probably just a few seconds ago. Um, but what we've done um, is we've replaced all the uh, electrolytic capacitors on board. Um, some of them look a little bit different, um, like these ones. Uh, before there were little stubby ones uh, with just a little bit of heat shrink on. But um, because the encapsulation of the... Uh, of the capacitors that are re replacing these two are a little bit different size. Uh, we just, I decided, um, yeah, put them out of the way because the reason they're coated in uh, heat shrink, um, like originally coated in heat shrink, uh, just like these uh, resistors and stuff are, is because they're located near quite uh, hot components. So you've got the MOSFETs and you've got this uh, transformer here. They're all giving off a lot of heat. So I'm kind of assuming that they've put these on to uh, give like a bit of a insulation uh, kind of jacket to them. So I thought, well, I may as well just locate them slightly out of the way. I mean, another idea was to get some um, thin gauge cable and maybe mount the capacitors like here and over here and just have the wires flying back to over here but um, I didn't want to do that because the monitor obviously worked from the factory as it was with this configuration and you know extending wires and things like that you can actually create uh, loops of interference and stuff you know they could be cross talk between well, possibly even these inverters you know if it's uh, running over here the wire could be picking up um, you know radio interference from the inverters or these transformers or anything really so you could in fact cause more problems um, the capacitors we've gone for uh, very good brand there's a couple of brands here but a uh, very good brand Panasonic uh, good reliable capacitor and we've gone for a nice Rubicon uh, capacitor for the main one there as well um, I've also glued down all the capacitors so uh, they've got some vibration resistance and yeah like I said replaced we've replaced all of them you know the smaller ones were already Rubicons but we've <laughs> which is a bit ironic considering um, you know we've replaced this with a Rubicon and uh, you know we've replaced all these with Panasonic so you know, a bit of shuffling about there, but most of the capacitors on here were um, an all right brand, you know, but not amazing. So now they're all Panasonic and Rubicon, so brilliant. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this put back where it belongs. Um, 
there's not much to see, so I'm going to put it all back together. Um, I'll get it back on the stand, and we'll probably do a video of it switching on. So, as you can see, it's back on the stand. We've got it plugged in, switched on, and we've got a bit of Firefox action going on there. But can we see a single piece of interference or pixelization? No, we cannot. But uh, as you can see, um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this monitor now. Um, had we fixed it with the capacitors and then turned it on and there was just a maybe like a handful of lines, that might have indicated that the, uh, that the inverter or possibly one of the transformers was to blame, but no, it's spot on. So anyway, hope you have enjoyed watching this video. Um, hopefully it may even help some people out there. Um, if not, hopefully it's just been interesting. Um, be sure to uh, keep watching, subscribe, like. Um, we've got more stuff in the pipeline. Um, and yeah, check out the uh, Retro Suite competition um, that we're doing in conjunction with keepitsweet.co.uk. Um, you've got until the 4th of May for that. And um, yeah, all you need to do is like the official Banana J uh, Facebook page. Um, that's how we're tracking people so if you haven't liked that then we're not going to be able to send you stuff because we won't know who you are um, so anyway thank you thanks for watching and catch you later <coughs> yeah well yes excuse me about that yes hmm so what's going on here then with all the uh, uh, circuity bits and uh, the computery stuffs, hey? Hmm. There seems to be a lot of talking about things. I cannot eat this. What is this? I'm not interested in this. Go away. Rawr!